Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. I appreciate it. I hope it will be informative for you. And uh, it may be new things to a lot of people here, and there may be some old things to people here. But most of it's going to be new because a lot of people ask me, well, what is vertical growing? Well, it's a lot of things. But we're going to talk about change. And change is very important now. The talking is over with. It's change. My travels have shown me what has taken place uh, with our food and how we consume it. In California, for instance, the breadbasket of the world, the Joaquin Valley, has always been known as the breadbasket of the world. And uh, all the major crops that have been grown there over the years, well, it can also be called nitrate valley as well. If you go into the wells there, they're loaded with nitrates. We have synthetic soils there, and a lot of the major growers have moved to other locations around the Joaquin. But where they have moved to have been, and drilling wells at six-figure costs, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to drill, they're finding salt intrusion wells that are highly alkaline, that they can't grow the strawberries that they used to. Or if they're next to a pig farm where runoff gets into the fields with their flood irrigation technology. So all these factors, and plus around the world, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here about many uh, of these subjects, especially in China and Asia, and where there's limited soil, it's contaminated, they've over-fertilized it, uh, the water is contaminated to begin with, so they're going to greenhouse production. They have to, just out of necessity and they're trying to grow organic type of produce and there's a huge demand for it. I meant we're at seven billion people here now in the world and growing to nine billion here in the next thirty years or more. So it's a huge demand on our agriculture and we as individuals have to take it upon ourselves to do something about it. So I guess the bottom line was that I stepped over the line several years ago in this and said we've got to do this. So I've researched and, and looked at vertical farming and there's a lot of, lot of greenhouse production rooftop production that is taking place that doesn't get the media attention that it should. And they're being very successful at it. The Philadelphia's, the Chicago's, the San Francisco's, the New York City's, all the major uh, urban areas, they're taking abandoned buildings downtown uh, and putting rooftop greenhouses on it and then in the bottom of the abandoned building is a retail center where you can get your lettuce and tomatoes and kale and rhubarb and strawberries. So that's a big step forward, but it's very limited in what they're doing. A lot of them are just doing conventional greenhouse, so they're not producing the poundage that you need to feed the masses. It's a limited amount. They run out of strawberries very easily. They run out of lettuce very easily. Their growing cycles are a little bit longer than, than they should be. So. That is not the answer. The answer is high production vertical farming. And that's what my project is about, and that's what brings me here. And uh, I've done quite a few presentations with this and, and catch people's mouths open. How can you do this? Well, it's, uh, uh, it's like... <laughs> The analogy of the field of dreams, you build it, they will come. And after I tell you how this is going to happen, you'll see how this can be done, whether it's here in Sedona, whether it's in Flagstaff or Kingman or, uh, you know, Bloomberg, Iowa or somewhere. 
it will show that CEA, Controlled Environmental Agriculture, can be done anywhere in the world, no matter what the weather conditions and the climate may be. It's Controlled Environmental Agriculture, and that's what this technology is about. I'll go back a little bit and talk about um, some of the change that is, is needed in this thinking that we have to do. Uh, we have to produce millions of pounds of produce in our locale. Take Sedona and Northern Arizona. We have a three-day food supply up here. Three-day food supply. I'm talking about the major chains. The Albertsons, the Kroger, Fry, Safeways, whatever. That's what we have. So if the catastrophic ills, environmental disasters that take place around the world whether it's Mexico, whether it's California, or uh, South America, where is the food going to come from? They can't meet all the demands of the major metropolitan areas. And I guarantee you, if a crisis takes place like that, a catastrophic event, Phoenix and the Valley is going to get it first. We're good at second or third. So we have to take it upon ourselves again to do something about it. Community gardens are, are great, Gardens for Humanity and the Verde Food Council have done a lot of great uh, planning and coalition of organizations to uh, uh, bring it to a head what they are doing now, but that still isn't enough. We have to do mass production and this is the vertical growing system is the alternative to small gardens and conventional agriculture. So, This is the mission statement, to grow food as much as you can and varieties. It's, not, it's just not table crops, the, the basic lettuce, the leafy greens, the spring mix. I was, just a little side note, I was in Fry's in Flagstaff the other day and it just galls me the cost of produce anymore. We'll grow nutritious, affordable, safe produce such as the lettuce, tomatoes, spinach, cucumbers, broccoli, peppers, and strawberries. And we're um, going to have future plans to have orchards and other berry crops. I started out with this project in mind and just a little history on it. Uh, and I had been thinking about it for quite a while. And I went to a lot of the shakers and movers and Flagstaff and ran it by them and see what they thought. And they thought it was a great idea. So that propelled me, I guess, to step over the line and do something about it. I'm shifting agriculture and that's what this is about. We're going to put, my first model is I want to build a total build out of 16,000 square foot warehouse it will be a butler building. It will not look like a metal <coughs> building once we get done with it. It will have a uh, customer friendly look to it. And as I tell the, the city of Flagstaff people, the engineers and the city manager, it will be Flagstaff friendly. Um, it won't even look like a metal building once we get it done. It'll have the skylights, passive solar. We're gonna have on site generators, on-site energy sources, plus dual access, solar tracking as well. So a lot of renewables, rainwater harvesting, all the sustainable and green um, technologies that are available today and hoping to work towards a LEED certified uh, type of building, possibly a silver in the LEED uh, uh, category. And of course, uh, Making it affordable food for the schools, the local restaurants and market will help reduce public health problems, obesity and diabetes. This is very near and dear. Um, uh, I've had a cousin that just passed away from diabetes. Um, and we can see our diets all over the country, all over the world, what it's doing, especially right here in northern Arizona. So there's an answer to this and a good nutritional program that's affordable and local 
of having free and reduced breakfast programs at the school and having those kids eating fresh strawberries, blackberries, or blueberries mm -hmm. in the morning instead of a donut mm -hmm. is, is very appealing to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, just give you a comparison of conventional agriculture. And believe me, folks, I like to get dirt under my nails. I have raised beds in Flagstaff, and I still grow an outdoor garden. I love getting in the dirt. It's the best therapy in the world. But if we take a tenth of an acre of conventional agriculture and a tenth of an acre, 4,000 square feet in a vertical growing uh, greenhouse warehouse, that tenth of an acre in conventional agriculture, and it could be tomatoes, it could be peppers or cucumbers, it's going to be about 2,000 pounds for that tenth of an acre. Okay, we're going to be looking at almost 800,000 pounds or more, over a million pounds and 4,000 square feet. Green Sky Farm will grow, just to give you an idea of herbs and microgreens and blueberries and strawberries. Think about this, having blueberries in Flagstaff or Sedona in the middle of January available to you and below $2 a pound. <laughs> Is that appealing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>